Hey everyone, Eric Thompson here. Hope that you are doing well. Welcome back to the channel as we continue uh, in this series with a little update on how the Mountain Man diet is going. Now, for those of you who didn't catch the first video, the link is in the description below. Okay, click on down there, pause this video, click on that, go over there, watch that video, and I explain a little bit about what it is that I'm doing, this diet that I'm starting, have started, and have been on for the last week. And so, briefly, hopefully today, here's an update of how things are going after one week. Now, just I'm just so pleased and I wanna get it right out and say it. Um, I believe, without having had a scale with me last week, I weighed 295 pounds and I weighed, uh, I mean, I, could even have been more, frankly. I had been eating a lot <laughs> that week. I weighed myself this morning, and I weighed uh, 284.8 pounds. And so let's just say two, uh, 280, okay, or 285, excuse me. So uh, a 10-pound weight loss over the first week. Now, of course, I'm pleased, and lots of hand claps, whatever that. Uh, but uh, this is, for one, for someone of my size, this is typical with a sort of a drastic diet change such as this has been. Also, of course, drinking, you know, pretty much just water. You're going to lose a lot of that water weight. And of course, as you know, uh, grain and bread holds in a lot of water. And so I cut that out. And so things are changing in my body. But bottom line, 10 pounds lost. That's good news. Review of what it is that I am and am not eating on this diet. Well, uh, the Mountain Man diet is based on the Paleo diet, which some of you may be familiar with. The Paleo diet, of course, trying to recreate the diet of our uh, Paleolithic ancestors. And so really only eating things that can be gathered, things that are raw, that kind of stuff. And so um, no dairy, you know, uh, no grain, pretty much, no bread or anything like that. Um, Consequently, no rice and no beans or anything like that. And so in the most general sense, it's going to be, you know, vegetables, fruit, and meat. And meat, of course, hopefully that's organic or range-free, um, as clean and as fresh and as process-free, as preservative-free as possible. I've kind of been thinking about it this way. I think, you know, if it comes out of a, a bag, a can, or a jar... I'm probably not going to eat it. You know, if it's been processed at all, I'm going to stay away from that. Um, that's sort of a review. Uh, now, um, challenges, well, of course, many challenges, as you can imagine, in the first week especially. Perhaps you're familiar with this. It's called the carb flu. And they, they you know, say that this is just the body's reaction to going a certain period of time without carbs or sugars or processed things or whatever it is. Well, I definitely had it a couple times, um, even now, just lingering way back in there. Headache, uh, weakness in body, and, and that kind of thing. You know, my body just sort of <laughs> throwing a fit because it wasn't getting what it wanted. Well, uh, I'm going to discipline my body and it's going to get used to it. And so we're just going to move through with that. That was tough, though. I mean, they were splitting excruciating headaches. And so uh, what I've been doing to try to get away from that is uh, fruit, uh, fruit that's high in sugar, natural sugar, of course. And so lots of bananas, and fr you know, apples and that kind of thing. Uh, fruit's more expensive than I wish it would be. And so I'm not eating, you know, too much uh, uh, fruit, mostly just vegetables. But even with vegetables, get into sweet potatoes, get into carrots, vegetables that are going to afford a certain amount of a natural sugar. I ate out this week um, twice, just one time. I went with my co-worker Terry, we went to lunch at Mi Casita, one of the many local Mexican restaurants. And of course, I thought this was gonna be very difficult indeed to eat out, especially at a Mexican restaurant on this diet, because what's in the, the heart of the Mexican diet, you know, beans, rice, tortilla, in the chips or in, you know, tortillas for fajitas or burritos or enchiladas or chimichangas or <laughs> any number of things. Um, but I was very pleased at this restaurant, perhaps at a Mexican restaurant near you, they had a buffet. And so I had a beef fajita 
chicken fajita, pork fajita, and when I pulled it out of the tray, I just let it sit in the slotted spoon, let some of that marinade drip off, just try and clean it up a little bit. Had that, had the ground beef that normally they would put in like tacos or whatever it was. Now I know that that ground beef and everything else was prepared with iodized salt. And of course the, you know, they didn't have iodized salt in the paleo era. And they didn't have, and then Mountain Man did not have iodized salt. <laughs> Mountain Man did not. They had, you know, probably a more rough salt or even salt block, theoretically, you know, um, considering so much of their food would have been salted and preserved in brine and salt, and salted meats and so forth. So um, I had some of that, you know, knowing that perhaps I was cheating because it had iodized salt in it, but it was really all that I could have eaten there unless I had just ordered eggs or a steak, you know, but it was lunch and, I don't want to hassle with any of that. It was right there. And then they had a small salad bar. And so I had a pretty good sized portion of lettuce, uh, which is just good for capacity to just fill me up. And then I had quite a bit of a pico de gallo. I mean, it's a tub. So I'm like, sure, let's go for it, you know. Um, and that's going to be mostly okay. And then uh, put some ground beef on top of that. So kind of like a taco salad, sort of. Um, and then I had some, kelp, some kind of cantaloupe and watermelon to finish it all off. I had a gr It was a great meal. Um, it was 8.49, I think, for the buffet and the drink. Not cheap, but not awful. And I, so I just gave my drink to Terry. You know, she had a sweet tea or whatever it was. And so, you know, that we shared that. Um, and I think I, I did pretty well, you know. Uh, and so that's, that's one of the things that I'm concerned about going forward in the future is eating out, finding a place where I can still have a selection of things that I can get on and enjoy. But at least I know that that at least that one place is going to work for me. And so maybe next I'll try the Asian Royal Buffet over here, you know, with its myriad options. They have salad bar. I think also some of those like um, chicken and uh, broccoli and beef and chicken and beef. I think those things would play as long as you can just strain off some of that syrup, some of that marinade. That it sits in there for hours at a time. Just get the broccoli. Just get the chicken. Um, etc. Uh, everything is going really well at home. Uh, Tori, I, I think, is still enjoying the diet that uh, she enjoys. Um, she's had you know pizza over this week and and eating you know sandwiches and that kind of thing, and that's fine. I got no issue with her sitting next to me and she's eating a piece of pizza or whatever it is. I got no trouble with that at all because if I if I couldn't do that, then I definitely couldn't go out into a restaurant where everyone's eating something that I can't eat or whatever it is. Um, tonight we have, we have a friend over this weekend. And so, um, I'm, I have ribs in the crock pot right now. If we had smell vision you could smell them. And, uh, just an idea. This is kind of what I'm doing. Um, you know, onion, carrot, garlic, ribs, olive oil, pepper, sea salt, Italian seasoning. And it's going to sit in there on low for about six and a half to seven hours. Okay. Actually, in a couple hours, I'm going to go in there and cut them up, separate everything. And then um, when we're ready to eat, or maybe like a half an hour before, hour before, I'll, I'll take mine out and I'll put them away. I'll put them in the oven and just let them kind of hang out. And then I'll take the other ones that, uh, that Tori and our friend, our friend are going to eat. I'll roll them barbecue sauce. There you go. So they get the barbecue ribs and I get ribs with vegetables and all that kind of stuff. I'll make them some fantastic mashed potatoes. I make awesome mashed potatoes. Um, and, uh, you know, with all the fun stuff in it and I'll just have some fried uh, zucchini and yellow squash, you know, with my, with my ribs. And so with those tomatoes and, or excuse me, onions and tomatoes, or <laughs> carrots and garlic. So simple solutions to the diet, uh, really going very, very well in general though. Let me know if you have questions about the diet. Um, again, you know, mountain man mentality. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been to the trading post yet. You can watch the uh, the first video um, to uh, to learn more about that. I think the only time I really intentionally cheated this week was when I had a little um, a little creamer, like a little amaretto creamer in my coffee. I was at a hotel having a cup of coffee, and I just wanted to sweeten it just a little bit, so I had a little creamer. And that was really the only time, besides like the iodized salt thing and the different other things at the Mexican restaurant. I feel like I've done really well, haven't cheated otherwise, and so everything is good. 10 pounds down the first week. We'll come at you next week with another update. Thanks for all your support and encouragement, and thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you care to. See you soon.